But rather than just talk about this, I've asked Mark and Jeff to come up and show us. Mark? Thank you, Damien. With the latest release of ArcGIS Pro, we've incorporated a number of enhancements to help you with your everyday workflows. Here, I have a map of the Wolf Camp Klein shell play in the Permian. I have wells from IHS market, my own well pads, and leases from IHS as well. As I zoom in and turn on our labels, we can see a pretty standard 14-digit API number. I can author an expression in Arcade to shorten this to only the first 10 digits, the most important digits. This immediately starts to improve the legibility of the map. As I open another map, I've authored an expression to bring in last month's production information. So we can see last month's liquid production, as well as last month's gas production, and the total depth of the well. So the important part to consider here is that once I author an expression in Arcade and share it to my enterprise, all the web maps that consume this service look and are labeled exactly like my map within Pro here. Moving on from labeling, I have some symbology here. As I zoom out, we can see that our map is soon overrun by oil wells. This may not be a bad thing to your shareholders, but we can't really see what's going on on the ground. They're, we're losing a lot of information in this symbology. So I can bring up some scale-dependent symbology and drag this slider bar to have different symbols turn on at different scale ranges. And with this last scale level, I made it green and small for emphasis. So now, as I zoom in, we can see the scale a dependent symbology change not only on the map, but in the table of contents on the left. This is a great way to improve the legibility of the map. Also, when I share this out to my enterprise, I only have to publish one service where previously I would have to publish multiple scale dependent services. Now that we've authored a fairly standard oil and gas map, let's take a look at a unique way you can display uh, data using four different variables. In this case, I know I have completion date, last month's liquid production, the percent water, and the liquid flow rate of our wells. I'm going to jump up to Midland and switch the base map to our dark gray vector canvas style base map. So now, I can start to adjust the symbology. I'll select graduated colors based upon liquid flow rate. And smart mapping gives me an intelligent default. I can get in here and change this according to however I would like to customize this. And I'll make these symbols slightly larger so you can see them in the back of the room. All right, so as I start to zoom out, we have our wells symbolized by flow rate. A small flow rate is indicated by the yellow symbol, whereas a larger flow rate is increased by the darker green symbol. I don't have to stop here. I can incorporate size in the form of last month's liquid production. So now, as I continue to zoom out, we're displaying our wells by two variables. The flow rate, which is indicated by the color, and last month's liquid production, which is indicated by size. I'm not done yet. We can adjust the transparency to bring in last month's liquid water production. In this case, we want high values, a high water content, to be uh, more transparent than values with a small water content. So now as I zoom out to the field, we're symbolizing based upon three different variables. The flow rate, last month's liquid production, and the water content of the well. This is a great view of what's happening in the field right now, but it doesn't give me much indication about what had happened while this field was being developed. So we'll bring in time. Based upon the completion date. So as I progress through this animation, 
we can see the first few wells in this field. We'll see a boom 2012, 2013 time frame, culminating in close to present day. So this really gives us an in-depth view of the data, how the well is currently producing, and how it was developed. I can share this out with four different variables uh, and access this uh, elsewhere. Moving on to layouts. I have a fairly standard wall map. You probably have this in your hallways and in your break room and conference room. With the latest release of ArcGIS Pro, we've incorporated dynamic legends. So now, when I check this box, I only want to show features visible within the map extent. You can see our legend uh, reduce the number of symbols that are not currently visible. And also, since Pro was first released, you guys have been asking us to incorporate Graticules. Well, with the 1.4 release, I'm happy to announce that we do have support for Graticules now. ArcGIS Pro allows me to save multiple layouts to this map frame. So let's go ahead and open a different map. So here I have a map based upon that multivariate symbology we just made. Pro's always been able to export to PDF. However, we've made a recent enhancement that allows us to view all vector data in vector format inside of the PDF. So as I open the PDF and zoom in, we can see the vector tile base maps and our vector content in the highest fidelity possible so we don't lose any fidelity while we print. And with that, I'd like to send it over to Jeff to talk about some more enhancements to ArcGIS Pro. Jeff? Excellent. Thanks, Mark. Morning, everybody. Pipeline operators can now perform many pipeline-centric workflows within ArcGIS Pro. Here on the screen behind me, we see a typical pipeline operations map. And if I zoom in further, we can kind of, kind of focus in on one of these main systems. Here's a crude oil system, and I'm showing the pumps along that system. And if I zoom in a little further, we'll start to see valve sections, valves, and the routes that make up this pipeline system. These are all being managed within our new APR extension, ArcGIS Pipeline Referencing. And if I zoom in a little further, we'll actually see the detailed pipe events at this river crossing, which are added to the system using APR. And then I can overlay those events by using land-based imagery in the background from the Living Atlas. So how did this information get into the Pipeline Georeferencing Network or into the Enterprise Geo Database? There's a lot of focus now on going back and making sure all this information in the, in the Enterprise Geo database is traceable and verifiable and complete back to the original source documentation. Here's a typical pipeline engineering alignment sheet that came from the as-built survey. And if I zoom in a little further here on the beginning of this sheet, we'll start to see the kind of detailed information that pipeline operators are, are uh, capturing into their Enterprise Geo database. We've got pipeline crossings, engineering stationing, and equations. All this information is critical to maintaining the pipeline assets. One of the new features we can now do in ArcGIS Pro is move this information by georeferencing into its, into its location and capture it into the Enterprise Geo database. So to do that, what I'm going to do is move back to the project location, the project area that this alignment sheet actually occurs in, and then using my imagery tab, click on the georeferencing option. Here I can now take that alignment sheet that I scanned into the system and fit it to my display. And for a second here, I'll just move it out of the way so I can see both the alignment sheet and the geographic context of what it, what it appears in. Now to go ahead and move this sheet into its proper location, I'm going to add control points, picking common points from the alignment sheet and common points to the land base. So I'll just zoom into my first source point on that alignment sheet and click on the Add Control Points button. Here I'm just going to pick a point where this uh, feeder road and the off-ramp occurs, just at the end of that triangle. And then I'll go back to the land base and find that same point as a control point. So here you can see from the land base, I've got that same highway. If I want to be a little more detailed, I'll go ahead and turn on my imagery. And then select that same point. I'll repeat that operation on a second control point. So here I'll select that road intersection. 
And again, find that road intersection in the land base. This could be done against our land base from the Living Atlas. This could be done against your own custom imagery. This could be done against parcel information or other land base features. Once I've gone ahead and, and added my control points, I'll go ahead and apply that. And I'll move and rotate and translate that alignment sheet into my map window. If I zoom out a little bit into my project area, you can see that alignment sheet's now been rotated and translated. And if I want to check the fit, what I'll do is I'll zoom a little further in on the map here. I'll select that image, and then using the Appearance tab, just simply use the Swipe tool to move back and forth and see the underlying imagery on top of the land base. So you can see I've got a pretty good fit only using two control points that I can now go ahead and start capturing this information into my enterprise geodatabase. So what I'll do is I'll move back to the beginning of that alignment sheet. And now what I'm going to do is use some of the new ArcGIS location pipeline referencing tools that are located inside of Pro to capture the center line and all the detailed pipeline stationing information associated with it. So to do this, what I'm first going to do is go ahead and capture the center line location, the geographic location of this pipeline on the face of the Earth. And to do that, I'm going to use some standard editing tools. So you can see from APR, I've got a center line feature class and my engineering stationing feature class. I'm going to go to Editing Toolbar, hit Create, and simply heads up digitize that center line location from the map. As you can see, I'm stopping at all the PIs or the points of inflection along this line because I'm going to go ahead and add calibration points to these locations in the next step. Now I'd go ahead and complete digitizing this full alignment sheet. For dental purposes, I'll stop there for this morning. Now that I have this center line located on the alignment sheet, I'm going to go ahead and add it to the linear referencing system. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the location referencing toolbar, choose that center line I just created, and create this route in the Enterprise Geodatabase. You'll see the location referencing create route tool appears. I'm going to add this to my engineering stationing network. I'm going to give it a route name. I'm going to give it a line name. I'm going to give it a start date. Everything inside of APR is time dependent, so I can move backwards and forwards in time. And I'm going to give it the from measure and the to measure, the from station and to station. For this example, I'll use that match line stationing, 1169 plus zero, zero. And for the two measure, I'll use the, that PI that I created at the end there, at 1204.77. So this will now create a route, a measured route, inside of the ArcGIS Pipeline Referencing Toolbox. And you can see it's automatically added two control points to, to the uh, network for me. Now for this detail alignment sheet, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of additional calibration points so I can fully manage and maintain all my stationing along this sheet. So for that, again, I'll go back to the Location Referencing Toolbar. I'll go ahead and add an additional calibration point here at this vertice. Enter in that station from the original alignment sheet. And I'll do the same at this additional PI here. So basically, we're going to have at the end of this process is a fully measured polyline that now understands engineering stationing in the enterprise geodatabase, all done from natively in our, inside of ArcGIS Pro. At this point, to fully complete this project, I'd go ahead and use the other tools in the toolbox to go ahead and add all the engineering stationing information from this alignment sheet and fully build out this section of the map. Now, we've been working in two dimensions here. The nice thing about using APR with a pipeline workflow is I can also view this information in three dimensions as well. So here's a typical pipeline reroute. I can see I've got some parcel information, and I've got it color-coded by the different acquisition status. What I've done is using the 3D components inside of Pro is that I can actually walk through and zoom through and fly through this map. So what it's going to do is zoom into this area walk down the pipeline, I could see the reroute, I could see my valves in the distance, the topology, and I can actually visualize where we are with this project, see which, pro which uh, parcels have already been acquired, which ones are currently being researched, and additionally, which ones are being uh, negotiated. 
I can use this for presentations. I can use this interactively in this map if I want to fly around and look at different areas. So really looking at 2D and 3D in a pipeline scenario all from one environment. And for those of you who are thinking about how to virtualize this, how to move this technology up to the web, I've been running this entire demo from a remote desktop. So ArcGIS Pro easily allows you to host this information on the web and run this entire infrastructure from a cloud-based solution. Damien? Thanks very much. It's pretty amazing thinking about everything that Jeff was showing was actually running in a hosted environment up in the cloud, whether that's Amazon or Azure. You now have the ability to host and deploy even all the way to 3D visualization and analysis using cloud resources. And you can see that Pro has really evolved with the tools that Mark showed and the advanced work that you can now do with pipelines that Jeff showed. Pro is really something that's time for you to take a look at.